very good afternoon to all of you uh, it's a great pleasure i want to thank the organizers uh, for giving us an opportunity and to showcase some of the uh, composite activities uh, going on in a the first thing is the initial title is manufacturing and certification and then i realized each would take half an hour and so the paper that we have written is uh, is there on the certification so i will focus on the uh, manufacturing aspects of composite structures what are the issues and what are the challenges and what i would like to say here is this is an effort put in by nal advanced composites division for the last two decades so what you're going to actually see is an evolution of the development of composite structures over the last two decades by a number of dedicated people within our division and i have really the privilege to present this activity to you and just to briefly tell you nal is one of the constituent labs of csir and focusing exclusively on aerospace and has all the disciplines and what is one of the main things is the composites as i was uh, dwelling on this topic yesterday evening i we normally speak in composite conferences and then i realized that i'm speaking at really a more general conference where there are many students and so there is i don't know how many are from the structures background and how many are specifically from the composites background so for the composite experts pardon my indulgence for a couple of minutes so what i want to just say is what are these composites before i get into details what is that i'm talking about the composite is nothing but putting two materials together to work in synergy and for the students the composites are everywhere you can look at nature it is the super teacher your tree is the perfect example for a wonderful composite and no offense to the metal people had it been made in metal the tree would not have survived all these years so you look at another phenomenal example of your tooth is a phenomenal example of a ceramic composite made at room temperature while with all our ad advancements today we still make ceramic composites at 700 degree centigrade so we have to learn a lot from nature and the way the composites are made and i specifically talk about polymer matrix continuous fiber specifically carbon fiber composites is a very constructive process so if you take we are all used we know how metal structures are made we take a huge block of material and slowly we remove 95% 96% and get our final component so it's a kind of a destructive process of generating composites of generating the final product whereas if we look at the composites it is a very constructive way so we take essentially we have is like a sheet of paper where the fiber with the resin is called a prepreg is already available to you and you build it layer by layer by layer so it's a very constructive way of doing things much akin to what's happening in nature so i think with that very brief uh, introduction to composites nal's core strength is we have many uh, areas of composites design and analysis manufacturing repair nde uh, testing process development and one of the important aspects to realize when we do composite manufacturing is that it is a concurrent approach with the design the design person has to work at all times along with the manufacturing person to realize these composite structures as i go ahead i will uh show you some case studies where this becomes evident and the evolution of composites at nal started in 80s and uh, made significant contributions to the tejas aircraft which i'll show you 
And now we have our own 14-seater Saras aircraft program where a lot of the structures are made in composites and there is a proposal to build a 110-seater uh, civil aircraft. Just look at uh, the current the scenario and you can see conventionally the maybe up to like, let's say two, two and a half decades ago the main material used for aircrafts was aluminum and composites have made a big foray and you can see as the time goes by right from 60s and you can see the percentage of composites increasing. Principally, one of the advantages is aluminum has a specific gravity of 2.7. Your composite has 1.5. And it has much higher specific strength, specific stiffness, corrosion resistance, fatigue insensitivity, and many more properties. And so, what we should see here is we are not behind at all. And the light combat aircraft is using nearly 45-50% of composites. So this is primarily the light combat aircraft and you can see many of the structures here made in composites and we will get into that in a little while. I think this is a very important uh, slide uh, which we have seen for quite some time. So if you look at the way, if you look at a typical structure of an aircraft, it has got two skins, it has got ribs, it has got spars, and the conventional way of making these structures, if you look at the metal, is you make everything individually and you mechanically fasten it. I think many people tried this in the 60s, 70s. They had metal designers and these structures failed in composites. And so then they decided they should look for new designers who think differently and the way we do composites is extremely different. There are two ways that you can do it. One is called a co-bonding route, where you make the part separately and you can bond it. The other is called a co-curing route. That means I make all my structure in one shot. My rib, my skin, everything is put together in the green stage and you realize this structure in one single piece. And if you look at this, if this is one, and if I go to the co-curing, your production time comes to 0.8, cost is 0.85, the structural efficiency is 1.25, and you get a weight saving of 20%, typically 15 to 25%. So the key aspect is you have to try and do as much as co-curing as possible. So I think I will not uh, get into the details of co-curing versus co-bonding. The essential benefits you get when you do co-curing is you do not have, typically these are uh, linear elastic kind of materials. They do not have the plasticity of aluminum. So you have, the more holes you introduce, you have more stress concentration. When you have co-curing, you have reduced assembly time, weight saving, Another important thing is fuel leakage. So this is an important area that you can, typically if I make a wing and I co-cure the bottom skin, I avoid all the fuel leaks. Now what is some of the, a couple of challenges when we make these composites? If I take a simple L angle, and when we make this, if I start with 90 degrees, when I finish the part and cure it, it becomes 88 degrees, 87 degrees, maybe 88.5 degrees. So this is called a spring in phenomena in composites. This, is, this makes life quite complex because we are not making simple L angles. We are making complex parts with a lot of co-curing and with a lot of integration. So how does this behave from the time you thought that it would behave in a certain manner and what you realize in the end. So the reasons are many and once you, these distortions are there, it becomes complex. The tool design becomes quite complex. And very interestingly, if you see today, 
we have a lot of analysis that is being done on the component but hardly there is much effort on understanding the effect of the tool the tool has to go to 175 degrees you know 250 times so what happens to the tool i think a lot more analytical capabilities need to be built in on these uh, effects on the tool so this is one aspect and there are number of solutions that you can do which i think uh, is may not be something we'll dwell on here so now let me just get to some of the challenges we have faced in making some of these composite structures so if you look at the lca this is the the rudder of the lca and this is the torque shaft the torque shaft was origi originally made in titanium and i think it used to cost a humongous amount of money and it used to be very uh, the weight also was much higher so the division came out with a very innovative concept i think maybe first of its kind to make a composite torque shaft i think the only metal is here and there are a number of technologies that have been used we have used innovative tooling technologies like dissolvable cores and we have used filament winding and so a number of different processes to realize the torque shaft and what we saw is came there was a huge benefit that we got nearly savings of 30% in cost and 20% in weight so this was uh, this is now actually uh, integrated as part of the rudder and is as has been flying for the last i think in the last 10 or 12 aircrafts so this is an, a very innovative uh, the number of challenges you face is when you make these aircraft structures the tolerances are very very stringent and they are all in 0.5 mm and that is where now we are facing a lot of problems we did a number of development activities and now the tolerances are 1 mm and our certification authority says i want it within 0.5 mm and this is a huge challenge to realize these co-curing structures in such a manner the fin of the lca is another very interesting case and you can see this is the main box called the torsional box and there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 parts and two skins all made in one single piece we took a few years we realized this first and then there is a mid rib over here that has to come and then we evolved further and were able to integrate that mid rib too and make the structure entirely in one single piece and you can look at the benefits over here the huge benefit is your weight which is the most important you look at the number of fasteners 2500 fasteners to zero and assembly of four weeks to zero you got a part that can readily go onto the assembly jig and get assembled to the other parts these are a number of centrifuge large parts for the lca and you can see these are all made in one single operation and when i was saying the real challenge in realizing this if i look at this let's say one stringer that has to be exactly in the same position every time and that position shouldn't vary more than 1 mm and so this to realize in production is uh, quite challenging and that's where we are uh, trying to improve the technologies further now from the lca we moved on to the saras aircraft which is a 14 seater uh, aircraft and a number of parts here we started with the control surfaces and then because of the weight uh, uh, the challenges and to redesign to get a lower weight the entire empennage and the wing were converted to composites and what is more interesting is generally composites are made by a process called prepregs and autoclave molding 
So you have to take these into an autoclave, which is an oven, essentially, and you pressurize it to seven bar, and so these are expensive. So when you go for an autoclave molding process, the costs are high. And as you know, in civil aircraft, cost is a major driving factor. So you want to reduce cost. So resin infusion technologies have been there now last 10 years, and NAL has come out with its own uh, technology of this resin infusion called vacuum enhanced resin infusion technology. So these were the control surfaces. And this is the horizontal tail. I think once again, a quite a unique structure. You can look at the bottom skin. There are ribs, there are stringers, there are two spars. This whole uh, unit is made in one single shot. And when you look at it, you get a 24% weight saving. 243 parts, if I made it, would be in metal, and it becomes 11. And the number of fasteners also comes down dramatically. And so this is the model, and you can see some more details. So the challenge in manufacturing these is really the tooling. The crux is in the tooling, and your part is as good as your tool. And so there is a very innovative, we make, another interesting thing is generally we make the tools also out of composites because there is also an issue of coefficient of the mismatch in CTE, in thermal expansion. So we develop the outer tools in composites. Then we got to develop all the stringer tools and we got to integrate all these. And then typically... Like a marriage, you know, if both the husband and wife are both very rigid, you end up in a divorce. So, in the composite tooling, it is like that. So, we have rigid outer tools and very flexible in inner tools. So, the flexible tool is placed inside. The entire thing is bagged and it's put into an autoclave and cured. So, how do you realize these tools? what kind of materials to use, what kind of tolerances. This is the real challenge in composite manufacturing. And this is, these are the various stages I showed you. And you can see all these parts are integrated and the bagging. This is the vacuum bagging, I think, is maybe uh, too detailed to get in here. So when you talk about composite structures, the vacuum bagging is a very important uh, part of the technology. Air is your big enemy. So when you are in this autoclave at seven bar pressure, and if air gets into your part, it stays there, and it can get rejected. So your technology of vacuum bagging is very important. And this is essentially the same thing I've demonstrated. Another interesting different kind of structure is the rear pressure bulkhead. And this is where, as you walk in the aircraft, you reach the dead end. That's the pressurized zone. And then you have the non-pressurized zone. And if you look at this pressure bulkhead, I think uh, the, the motivation was we saw Airbus had made this pressure bulkhead in a resin infusion technology where the skin is different and the ring was made separately and then integrated. I think this may be the first time where you can see a skin completely integrated. There's a ring here. And this ring is where all the stringers come and get attached. So each of these gussets should be within 0.5 millimeters. Your tolerance on the contour is within 0.5 millimeters. And if you look at the benefits from 34 kgs, we got it down to 17 kgs, and from 700 fasteners, it came down to zero. So here again, the challenge is very interesting tooling concepts over here and over here. And what I was saying as a design, which has got to be concurrent, is we spent a lot of time on how to take the layup over here. It's just not making the part. How do the layers go from the skin to this area? So I think... Uh, we spent more than three, four months 
and the design team sat and these joints had then had to be tested and validated for the pressure loads. So what I talked about was pre-pregs and autoclave molding. So we said we want to reduce the costs. So when you want to reduce costs, material is 25%, processing cost is approximately 75%. So how do you reduce these costs? So essentially in a resin infusion technology, you have dry fabric ready, placed, and then the resin is infused from outside. And there are a number of variations, and what we have developed is verity, and that is probably the final truth. So in this, when you use the infusion technology, you can reduce the cost because the pre pregs are expensive, these have to be stored at minus 18 degrees centigrade. So all these things can be eliminated and then you can reduce the cost. So as I said, I have a tool. I put my dry reinforcement in. Then the resin is infused using vacuum and then you cure the part. The key thing is we also apply a certain amount of pressure during the curing. So this is the kind of structure that we want to realize using the verity process. One of the key things is now I have dry fabric and I have this resin flowing in. How do I know that my resin has reached everywhere? So one of the key technologies we developed was a fiber op optic flow sensor. So you can see in a typical laminate I'm showing you there are fiber optic, <coughs> these are bare, bare fibers. They work on the reflectivity principle. And as the resin crosses the sensor, it gives you the information that the resin has reached the location. And as it goes further and further. So this is one of the key technologies for realizing infusion technology. And this is a typical skin, which is about six meters in length and about 1, 1 1.5 meters in width. And as you infuse, you can see a number of sensors placed. And all this is operated through a laptop. All the sensors come, and the information is recorded on this GUI. And we have seen that sometimes the resin doesn't reach there. You have to make some alternates at that time, because you don't want to result in any reje rejection. So this is the part made. And like you say, the proof of the pudding is in eating it. Our proof of the pudding is NDE. So we are all worried when we go to the NDE person because what kind of, is he going to find a defect over there? And the NDE show clearly that the part is meeting the requirement. So this is another complex part uh, realized in resin infusion technology. And you can see the kinds of ribs, the kinds of cutouts, and the size of the part that was realized using the resin infusion technology. And I think this is the largest and most challenging part that we have made. And you can see the relative size of the part. This has got more than five minutes? Okay, two minutes. So more than uh, 300 parts integrated in one shot. And I will not get into the details. And when you want to, the typical thing is when you have to develop this kind of technology, there are so many. The process itself has to be developed and validated. There are so many things of integrated tooling concepts, fiber optic sensors, an automated resin infusion system. I have to infuse 60 kilograms of resin oh, in two hours. How do I do that? So we have a completely automated system. And I think from 2004, we have moved up the technology ladder. I just want to take a moment I asked one of my friends, my colleagues, close colleagues, a year ago, we are doing all this, where are we? And so he did a survey and said, and found GKN is a huge aerospace company, and they found what is GKN looking at by 2020 is a structure like this. What is Mitsubishi looking at is a structure like this. And so where is NAL technology placed, and I think, being from NAL, being from India, 
I'm very happy to say we are already there. But, there's always a but. I think we have to look at production. We have done the R&D. Recently when we had discussions with Airbus, they said, how are you going to make one of this every day? And so that is where we need to look at automation in layup, automation in assembly, faster ND, and to meet the production rate. And I will just take another minute. Another key aspect, I think, what was already spoken on IVHM, I see Dr. Bowler sitting there. He's going to talk on SHM. So I will not get into the details. You all heard Mr. Edo Kressel on the SHM activities. So we need to make structures intelligent. Now, there is a school of thought saying that, you don't worry, we built a structure for 10 years, nothing is going to happen. Look at us. We have so many sensors. And I think as we age, these sensors are going to play a more and more important role. And I think SHM is a very important aspect. And this is where we've been working for the last 10 years and made um, many, we have gone to the flight trial stage, both on the Hansa uh, aircraft and the UAV. And I will skip this and just say, in conclusion, if, if you want to realize composites, co-curing is the way. You got to reduce cost. You got to look at stealth technology. You got to look at newer materials. You got to look at the repair. SHM is going to be a big area. And we have to improve the analytical and simulation capabilities. I think they are still at the nascent stage. Process modeling, for example is still not where it should be. And composites, I would say, has no limits to the imagination. People started with laminates, and these are the kinds of structures we have already realized. Thank you.